everyone, Misco Electric here. I have reviewed several dozen e-bikes and now the Misco Electric channel is really picking up some steam in the e-bike world, which means that I get a lot of emails throughout the week from e-bike manufacturers asking me to review their bikes. We produce more than just e-bike content here, so I have a limited amount of time and there are hundreds of e-bike manufacturers out there. So I have to say no to most of these bikes. I try my best to choose bikes that stand out in the marketplace and are likely to be recommendable but I can't always get that right. The bike in front of me today definitely has some amazing standout features, but also a couple of points of caution. This is the Anioki AQ177 Pro Max. Got a nice ring to it, eh? Let's get to it. Before we take this bike for a ride, let's talk about its features and benefits. This moped style with the 20 inch by four inch fat tire was popularized by the Super 73 brand. And there is some room for improvement with that form factor because they have a top tube that goes all the way across. It's integrated with the seat and generally the seat is not long enough to accommodate a second rider. The Anioki solves these problems with its step through design, which makes it easier to get on and off. It also has an adjustable seat here, which can accommodate riders anywhere between five foot three and six foot five. And it also has a dedicated rear seat here. The saddle will allow you to put that passenger on the back, but also you can pop this out and replace it with a basket. So if you need to use it for cargo, you can. But those might not be the biggest advantages. The battery capacity is the highest I've ever reviewed or even heard of. This battery is 48 volts and 60 amp hours, which is equivalent to 2,880 watt hours. That's almost three kilowatt hours. It's 33 pounds. Anioki says that this battery can deliver up to 100 miles of range on the throttle only and up to 200 miles of range on the pedal assist. That is the longest range that I have ever heard of from an e-bike. The battery has a handle on it, which makes it easy to get it in and out of the frame in case you wanna bring it inside to charge it. And it comes with an eight amp smart charger. Anioki says that would take seven to eight hours for a full charge. And that's the fastest charger I've ever seen on the market. This is a class three e-bike, which means that riders can choose to use the throttle or pedal assist with speeds upwards of 28 miles per hour. Bikes with this type of speed can keep up with traffic. So they're often used on the road, but in many cases, they don't have the safety features that I think are really important for that use case. The Anioki has turn signals, rear active tail lamps, a motorcycle grade headlamp, and an electric horn. This also has hydraulic brakes with 180 millimeter discs that are three millimeters thick. That is motorcycle grade as well. But not everything is sunshine and roses. All the components that I see on here are either entry level or off brand. For example, this is a Shimano seven speed shifter, but it is the entry level as well as the Tourney derailleur down there. There's also the hydraulic brakes, which are by DY Island. The front fork and the rear suspension are both unbranded. The motor back here, 750 watts, but a peak of 1200 watts is unbranded. And that goes for the battery as well. Anioki doesn't say who produces the battery cells and that's not a good sign. On the Amazon listing for this bike, it says that the battery pack is UL listed, but I can't find that same information on the website. And the battery does not have a sticker that says it's UL listed. We've heard of e-bike battery fires in the news recently and UL certification really helps instill confidence that your battery is safe. Well, this bike is 112 pounds, so hopefully it's manageable, but I will say I really like this riding position with the handlebars coming up so far. It seems like I can take this on pretty much any kind of terrain, sand, winter, anything like that, not only because of the fat tires, but because this includes fenders as well. But I really need to test this out, so I think it's about time that I get out on the road. All right, so one unique feature of this bike is that it has an NFC reader. So if I use this little disc, I turn the power on, I tap it right here on the screen and it will allow me to turn the bike on. So it's like a key except for in this card format. I do like this idea for security purposes. Um, it makes me a little bit nervous. I think the bike comes with a few of these, at least two. Um, so that's nice, but uh, you definitely don't want to lose this <laughs> because otherwise you can't start up the bike. 
but let's get to riding and test out all the different modes. Uh, this has pedal assist and throttle, so let's get to it. I'm just gonna start off in the first pedal assist mode. As you can see, I am in the third gear, so not too shabby. Now, this is a heavy bike, as I just mentioned, but um, it is doable that I could uh, pedal it if I really do want to. Um, make it a little bit easier. Um, also keep in mind that with the pedal assisting, it's very mild on this first level, uh, which is nice because you don't necessarily want something that's too torquey or too jerky once you are just starting to get used to the bike around lower levels of pedal assist. But so far, I like that it has limited power in that first pedal assist mode. Let's bump it up a little bit. Now to be fair, I'm probably not gonna do all that much pedaling with a bike like this, but I will say it's a lot more comfortable than a lot of the other moped style e-bikes because of that adjustable seat. So I can bring that up and really get my legs to stretch out, but it still has that cool moped design. Take it up more. Some good burst of power here. Good burst of power in pedal assist three. Let's just take it up to see if we can get it up to its max speed. This has a cadence sensor. And I will say I can hit 27 before I come around this corner. I would imagine I can get up to 28 pretty easily on this. Uh, but the one thing I'm noticing already is at the highest level of pedal assist, when I'm on flat terrain, I could use probably another gear or so in order to get up and going. But this definitely is a quick bike. The saddle is really comfortable, nice and wide, good cushion, just how I like it. 27 miles per hour, nice and easy on this, and the pedal assist five is nice and responsive. Let me uh, test out the throttle now. We'll stop here. I'm gonna go down to the first pedal assist. It is a full twist throttle, so this whole piece comes back. Now, usually I'm pretty picky on grips. These are fine. Um, since I'm in a very upright riding position, it's actually um, not something I'm too concerned about. It is a rubberized material, so if my hands get a little sweaty, they will still stay on and they have a texture on them, so it breaks it up a little bit so they're not so slick. All right, let's test out this throttle. So I'm in the first pedal assist mode. I'm gonna pull back. Again, a very mild transition. It is topped out right here at just about four to five miles per hour on this flat land. So the throttle is tied to the pedal assist. Let's move up to the second. It seems to cut off at about 10 miles per hour or so with the second pedal assist, throttle. All right, let's bump it up to pedal assist three with the throttle, fully back. At about 16 miles an hour on the throttle with that. Go over here and take it up to the pedal assist boards. Four, I can hit about 22. I will say, I just going over some of these bumps, the suspension feels pretty good, not only in the front, but in the rear. All right, let's go to five. Let's see if we can make it up before this curve. Definitely about 25 miles per hour on that fifth mode. Let me turn around though and try it again on this stretch. And I'm going downhill at first, so let's get up to speed. Full throttle. Full throttle, I'm hitting about 26 miles an hour. So it looks like that's gonna be kind of the limitation here with the throttle only on the top of the pedal assist, uh, which is really good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. I think you'd be able to keep up with traffic just fine. Um, I 
did mention that that suspension feels pretty good but I want to take this out on the trail real quick and really test that out because when it gets really rocky and hilly that's when you can tell on these kinds of bikes how they can handle the terrain. This cadence sensor seems a little bit delayed but to be fair it is a lot of power so it's manageable. It takes a second for it to cut the power off to the motor and also two rotations of pedaling in order to get the power from the cadence sensor. So just be mindful of that. It's a little bit delayed and if you want to just kind of get rolling without having to wait for that delay as much, you can use the throttle. This is definitely a capable on pavement bike, but I want to see how this is going to perform on the trail. So let's make our way over there. Interesting, because sometimes when I'm pulling back the throttle, it seems like it's a little bit delayed. I'm in the fifth pedal assist mode. It's having a hard time getting up this hill, it seems. I think that the motor is, oh, this has cruise control as well. So as, if you hold it for a certain period of time going a certain miles per hour, it'll actually just keep the throttle on for you. And I think that is such a great feature for a bike like this that can be roadworthy and a commuter. If you're taking this to commute, you definitely want to have cruise control to be able to let your hand off of that position where you're holding back on the throttle for so long. Let's test out this braking power really great hydraulic brakes and again those are some thick rotors so happy about that performance it had a little bit of skid on the tire but there's a little bit of a knobby tread so it could definitely bring me to a stop and you know with a tire like this a big battery like this you don't really have to worry as much about uh, the efficiency side of things because most people aren't going to be going 100 to 200 miles on their trips. Right now I have three bars out of the total five bars of my battery, but I'm not too worried about how much energy I'm expending at this moment in time. It is a pretty hilly area, so I'm using a little bit more than expected. Actually, I just saw one bar go up, so probably dependent on how much power I'm utilizing at the moment in time the battery will shift to give me real-time information based on how I'm riding the bike. Easy transition from throttle to pedal assist. It's holding nicely. A little bit noisy I will say this 750 watt motor with a 1200 watt peak make our way down the trail here. I'm just going to keep it on pedal assist three because I don't want to get too out of hand. Actually, I might even drop it down to pedal assist two. Oh yeah, this rear suspension is doing a lot of work and it feels great. I've had some other moped style e-bikes that the rear suspension is just a little too tight. This actually feels really nice and the front fork too. Good braking power. Fat tires also provide a little cushion with the ability to let some of that PSI out, lower it. Benton is really doing a nice job on these tree roots. It's fit to do stuff like this, but it's also fit to be a commuter with that big battery on long range. So probably be a good um, like hunting bike, especially considering you could put someone on the back or get the basket and take a lot of cargo with you strapped down. Woo! Saddles make 
making a little bit of noise when I go over some of these really big bumps, so I gotta look into that, but. Feels good riding around on these trails with this bike. Easy to get up this hill. I'm only on pedal assist three and it is struggling to get up. I'd have to put it up a couple more levels in order to make that a little bit easier and smoother, but they can handle it. That's for sure. Watch that little squirrel. I like that this has a, an electric horn because if you are gonna go up to about 20 mile, 28 miles an hour, you're gonna wanna have in traffic something that people can hear. The screen is very basic. There's uh, nothing really too special about it. You can move through different modes here to see, um, you know, what kind of voltage you're pulling, how many miles you've gone, battery gauge on top. So it's showing me the power output. And it tells me how fast I'm going. So a lot of, a lot of the basics, nothing too special about this screen. All right, let's head back and I'll share my final thoughts about this moped style Anioki AQ177 Pro Max. First, I'm gonna share the things that I think are special about this bike, and then we'll talk about the improvements that I'd like to see. One of my favorite things about this bike is the comfort, not only because of the riding position and sitting up with these handlebars up high, but also because of the saddle. It's super wide and cushiony. I like that I can adjust it with my longer legs to be able to get a full stride if I do want to pedal. And typically when you see these moped style e-bikes, the seats are a little bit lower. They're also not as comfortable, and this really is comfortable, not only because of that seat, but because of the dual suspension. I think it performs really well, even on trails. A close second is that this bike comes full featured out of the box, so I don't have to buy additional accessories to make it the way that I want. For example, it has this electric horn, so traffic will be able to hear me if I'm using it as a commuter, or these turn signals, so I can signal if I am going left or right. The integrated lights, so the big bright headlamp up front, the brake lights in the back. This also has this rear passenger area, which is really significant because not only could you put a passenger back there with the saddle, but it also comes with a cargo basket. So if I wanted to swap that out and use this as a cargo bike, a delivery bike, I could do that as well. The fact that this has fenders allows me to take it on any kind of trail and not worry about getting dirty. I could take this with these tires in snowy conditions, sandy conditions, pretty much anywhere. And that's why I think this bike is such a great value because of the fact that you can use it for so many different things. This is a bike that appeals to a wider audience, whether it's male or female. I will say I like the design, although it is utilitarian. Producer Tim likes the design, so I do think that it appeals to both genders, but also young and old. I could see a college kid, 20 years old, riding this around on campus, using that cruise control, putting their books on the back, but I could also see an older demographic, maybe retirees, that will really value the comfort on this bike, not only with the suspension, but with the saddle. That brings me to my next point, which is the battery. This really does open it up to a wider audience as well, because if people don't have regular access to charging, they maybe only need to charge it once a week. And the range is really nice because you could take this out on trails for a really extended period of time, but also I could see hunters taking all their equipment with them, going in colder conditions, maybe when it's not as efficient and still getting what they need out of the bike. Next topic is safety. I feel safe on this bike and that's important because with this much power and the bike being heavy at 112 pounds, you really wanna feel stable. Fat tires offer great traction. There's a lot of rubber on the road. The hydraulic brakes are effective. They have the thickest rotors that I have ever tested. And the power distribution is not only predictable, but also not jumpy. So when I have it in certain pedal assist modes, when I'm using the throttle, it's capped at a certain miles per hour, but also it doesn't get away from me, which is why I also think it's pretty good for that older crowd. Lastly is the price. This is an incredible value. It's listed at about $1,700 and the battery alone is over $1,000. So to be able to make this bike under two grand is really impressive, but it definitely comes with 
cutting corners in certain places. So let's talk about the improvements that I would like to see and those things that are missing. There are hundreds of e-bike manufacturers and Anioki is not a leader in the industry. They don't have presence here in the United States. So there's no service network or anything like that. If you do want to communicate with them, you have to do it over email. And actually I had some problems with the bike or questions that I wanted to get cleared up. And when I did communicate with them, it was a little challenging because I was dealing with not only a different time zone, but also there were some breakdowns in communication because of the language barrier. There is a warranty and if Anioki stays in business, I'm sure they'll send you some replacement parts, but it's up to you then to find somewhere to service it and pay for those services. If you can accept the service risk, then there's one more hurdle to overcome and that's this battery. I'm not convinced that it is UL listed because there's no sticker on it. And then on the Amazon listing, it says that it is UL listed, but on the website, I can't find that information. Those are my major concerns, but now let's talk about the smaller opportunities for improvement. Back to the battery. It's huge, but I wish that I could tap into the power in other ways. Other e-bike manufacturers, they put a USB port on the bottom of the computer so that you could charge your phone while you're riding with the handlebar mount, or they even integrate a USB port on the battery, which is significant because then you could take it out and power things, say at like a campsite, whether it's lights or other devices. And with a battery this big, I think that is a missed opportunity that they haven't included a USB port anywhere. Now let's talk about the rear rack. It's integrated into the frame and it has a high capacity of 110 pounds, which is really great when you have the cargo basket back here, because then you can pretty much take anything that you want with you. But this ships with a saddle on the back and I don't know of many people that are 110 pounds or less that could be a rear passenger on here but even if you did find someone like that there are no pegs on here and there's nothing to protect you from getting your shoelaces or your pant leg or anything like that stuck in the wheel. My last piece of constructive criticism is that there are no name brand high quality components on this bike. I'm comfortable with riding around on an off-brand bike but I know that for most riders it's really important important to have those name brands for reliability and serviceability. Even though these aren't name brand components, I still think that this is a good bike and I will ride it around a lot. And the reason why I really wanted to test this out was because of the incredible value. I really hope that you guys found this review helpful. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric. Oh, <laughs>